Hello everybody, my name is Luke Marr and this is Hot Love Mode and today on Hot Love Mode we are getting into the 2022 Brit Awards red carpet. Now it wasn't like a huge red carpet filled with like so many celebrities that I knew who they were. Regardless, there still were moments that must be discussed so without further ado, let us begin. First up we have Abby Roberts. She is a TikTok star and I believe a hair stylist as well. She's wearing Natasha Zinko. Maybe the prompt from the Brits as you will probably see throughout this experience is wear black with cutouts. The up and coming British designers, the younger crowd within the UK. There is a lot of exposure of the body, cutouts. I will say, again, I don't know much about Natasha Zinko, but there does seem to sort of be that expression from the UK fashion scene. Now it's pretty much bodysuit of sorts here, everywhere else, sheer sleeves, the sheer skirt, cutout areas on the top. It's not too much to write home about. Out. Like I understand what we're going for. It's sort of sensual and all of that And also I think for Abby Roberts a lot more of like the beauty element is probably where we're looking And I do appreciate the makeup moment and the hair like again I don't shit about it really but like looks more interesting than most of the stuff that I see but of course I want more Next up we have Adele legend icon star queen. She literally is my everything who wants to be right as ran me seeing Adele She's wearing a custom Armani Privé look Armani Privé if you do not know is the haute couture level line from Armani. Usually very simple. That's the one thing I will say. Armani has never ever, I don't think in its existence, ever tried to be like, we are super fun and out there and crazy and kooky and avant-garde. No, 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 no. Mr. Armani is very simple, very tasteful, very elegant, doesn't try to rock the boat, just makes nice clothes. And I think when you look at a look like this, yes, is it all black and there's polka dot sheer that comes out and creates a train? And is that the super crazy kooky stuff that like we want? No. But what it is, is a beautifully fitted dress. Dell looks amazing. The way that it just creates such a silhouette on her, like that waist is god tier. It really is. It is stunning. Plunging neckline I think is done beautifully. It doesn't expose so, so much, but at the same time it sort of proves that like, yes, always kind of think of Mr. Romani as like a prude and very sort of conservative. You know, the old saying, Versace dresses the mistress and Armani dresses the wife. Well, like, listen, the wife said, suck a dick, die. I'm gonna wear this dress and it looks great. And it's done really, really tastefully. And I think it proves that like, prude, no. Know what she's doing? Absolutely. The polka dot sheer sort of chiffon coming out. Do I love, love, love it? No. Does it fit in with Adele's sort of more demure style? I personally think so. With Armani, you're not gonna get some like crazy attachment. And I think the fact that this dress fits her beautifully is sort of the point. When the dress is just trying to be a beautifully fitted dress, it's not gonna wrap itself up in bows and crazy things and all of that. I think the polka dot sheer adds a little element of not just a black gown. It does the job. For what it is, and I think from what we've been seeing from Adele with this most recent album, she is going cool, calm, and collected. I kind of wouldn't expect anything else really from her in that way. And then Adele, for one of her performances, wore a custom Valentino Haute Couture gown. Now it is an off the shoulder chiffon gown that was fully sequined to Oblivion. Like you wouldn't even really know it was a chiffon underneath, which I think is great, lovely, chubbly, bubbly. The color is green from my understanding. I, the lighting changed the way that we see it, but it does reflect in a sort of like light green sort of direction. It almost has like a velvet, just the sheen plus the sort of darkness, the way that the light reflects off of it. It just has velvety feel. It's not my favorite Adele look in the entire world. Most definitely not. I appreciate the handcrafted element, of course, of a beautiful Valentino Couture piece. And I mean, when you see up close the sequins and like how well they're done, it's gorgeous. It is a feat of hand craftsmanship, no doubt. I just wish that maybe it was a bit more exciting. Maybe we removed that flouncy flounce that sort of flopped over from the off the shoulder moment. I love the shoes, the shoes are great. The, the Valentino 3D rose gold shoes. They're not rose gold, they're roses that are in gold and you know, they're sling back. So those are great, those are lovely. And maybe maybe I wish that we had just done that in like the green, the, the, the 3D flowers, cause those are really, really beautiful. I want the best. I just don't know if this was it. Next up is H. Now 
I believe he's wearing Louis Vuitton. I believe that only because the shoes are those Louis Vuitton Jordan knockoffs, which Virgil Abloh, he loved. The sunglasses also have a Louis Vuitton feel to them. I tried to look up the sweater, couldn't find it. And, and the pants, the way that they fit, has a very Virgil at Louis Vuitton feel, as in they don't. Fit. I understand what we're going for again. It's sort of all white, crisp, it's it's clean, it, I get it, but I want more, I demand more. Also, when I was looking online, like there were sweaters that had big sort of like pockets on them instead of just this pocket. Now I know this is a big pocket, but I mean like they had almost like bags sort of sewn into them. And I thought that was like a cooler element of like a pocket take. You know, Virg Virgil did quite a bit. There are good looks from a range of Louis Vuitton collections that we could have tapped into most definitely. I don't know if this is exactly it. I just think the length of the sweater is awkward because the way that the rib at the bottom sort of falls like right on his hip and then flops over, it sets like a strange weird precedent for where his waist is and like where it begins, where it ends. Also it sort of creates like a marshmallowy sort of moment and then it's sort of like dropped down so that it emphasizes the marshmallow. And then the pants are baggy. They need a bit of a fit. We could have fit them better to the shoes, to the sneakers, most definitely. I think there's like a lot of fit issues here and I get that you're a man. Don't care anymore. Could have been done far, far better. I think there are much better looks. Are on the floor, very much so. One job, it needs to at least fit. Fit doesn't fit. Also, if it's not Louis Vuitton, I'm sorry. LV team. If it is, I'm not. Next up is Anne Marie and she's wearing Philosophy di Lorenzo Serafini. Again, as you can see, we're starting to see a lot of these sort of cut out, very loopy sort of lingerie as like outerwear elements with the bra. And then it's a low slung little pant that covers you and then a leather jacket with a sharp sort of shoulder over top. Doesn't work. It's just not, it's not there. It's not fun. It's not exciting. It's not interesting. It's not intriguing. The other issue is like when you put the leather jacket over the bra top, it ruins whatever excitement the bra top has. And then also the pants. It's just a bit too Mr. Tumness from the Chronicles of Narnia. It's unfortunate. I wish it wasn't that way. Listen, the other thing about the pants is they have a very Greek mythology, sadder, you know, the goat people that are like humans up top and then like goat on the bottom with the goat legs. That's what happens with these pants is because they're so long and they're so tight and fitted doesn't allow you to sort of see where things shift and change. That's the issue here is it's a lot of elements that don't really work together. And then when they don't work together, like they just make everything worse. Next up is Ashley Roberts. Now she is wearing Mano. And now listen, would I say that like, this is my favorite look in the entire world? No, but like the brand Mano is very cutouts, slinky black dress. It's the same thing as Armani. Like that's what they do. That's kind of it. I can't be mad at them for not doing crazy over the top ridiculous because like that's the element. There's a high slit that goes honestly almost to the waist and then there are cutouts both on upper hip area. It cuts out quite largely into like breast, into abdomen and then little elements sort of like cut in and out. It almost sort of creates like straps and strings and there are little, you know, halter strings that go around, holds up the dress sort of creating the bust area and then there's cutouts and this is a style that people People enjoy. Can I find some sort of intellectual excitement in it? No. I don't know if it's meant to be intellectually exciting. I think it's just meant to be like a, like a nice dress. So does it fit well? Yeah. Do I wish that maybe the contour did a little bit of a better job at emphasizing different areas of the body? Yeah, sure. Absolutely. But like fit isn't bad. Feels very Rorschach on top, which I kind of enjoy. And like maybe that would be a fun thing for Mano to get into is like doing Rorschach sort of elements up top. You know what I mean? That would be kind of cool. But besides that, it's a black dress, with a lot of cutouts. And like that's what it's supposed to be. So like that's what it is. The Brits need to tag your stylist because I can't find who you're wearing. And it really is not helpful for everybody involved, myself included. Now, next up is Brie Rush. Runway. Now she is wearing vintage Jean-Paul Gaultier. It is pretty much a strapless black dress with what I believe is like a satin sort of wrap cape that falls off of the shoulder. Yeah, I mean, nice dress, but it's a strapless black dress with, you know, a cape and that's that and that's that's that. The velvet is beautiful. The high slit works. The strapless element is good. The necklace up top, lots of jewelry. I get it. And I know that this is vintage, so it's not like a Gautier recreation. Although like, of course I would like a more exciting Gautier look, but it fits. 
There's not really much to say. Next up is Clara Amfo, and she's wearing Richard Malone. And I asked myself why. Not why is she wearing Richard Malone, but like, why is this the look that we chose? Richard Malone uses a lot of dead stock textiles and fabrics, which I think is really, really great. But like, this is not, even the goodwill of the brand and the designer can't save this. In reality, it's pretty much just a very simple cocktail dress. Obviously, we can tell that it's boned. It's just sort of has like a silk moment draped all over. My issue is the most recent spring 2022 collection by Richard Malone is like very good. It's beautiful. It has a lot of this sort of draped, twisted, sort of fabric manipulated elements, but it's done really smartly. It plays on different elements of the body. It has really beautiful cutouts. This is not that unfortunately the swags in the front are bad it feels like a uranium bed sheet next up is dave now i believe and it's only because he's wearing a harness and i've seen him wear louis vuitton in the past that he's wearing louis vuitton there is a fitted little suit moment going on a pant and a sort of harness that comes out and over it could be a range of brands i really again don't know who it is i nobody tags a goddamn brand when they dress you it makes no sense to me i don't understand they dressed you just throw them a goddamn tag for everybody else so that we could like do our jobs thank you it's not that hard black suit fitted pant little harness harness moment going on there. It's not really much to write home about. It's just a fitted suit. And like, that's great. And I love that. It fits in genuinely with the vibe that I feel like we've been seeing quite a lot, this red carpet, which is utilizing black in ways that subvert the normal elements of black dresses and suits and clothing. But like something a little bit more exciting would have helped people maybe care more. And I say that to everybody at this red carpet. Something a little bit more exciting would have helped. Next up is Ed Sheeran. He's wearing Etro. I mean, dude, the suit. Why can I see the tie underneath it? I get the whole like only button one of the buttons on your jacket, but like, no, that doesn't fit. And I think it's meant to fit because Ed Sheeran is not like a fashion guy. Tell me why we thought this is the moment. This is it. This is the excitement because it's not. This is genuinely awful. You should be embarrassed. This is bad. Next up is Emma Corrin. Now Emma was seen wearing a Harris Reed look from the spring 2022 collection. I was very happy to see it. This collection honestly I think is stunning. It's a beautiful sort of mixture of the masculine and the feminine and I feel like we talk about that a lot on this channel and a lot of designers sort of do that but I think Harris is very very good at sort of bringing tailoring in a different sort of sense. The fact that you have this beautiful jacket that has these cutouts here it's different and then on top of that you sort of bring in this gorgeous sort of sheer fabric that is trimmed in a gorgeous lace again it's really lovely you then have a large flare pant which a Harris Reed staple the big hat also I think is really really lovely again it sort of brings out this sort of angelic sort of halo oh brummel hat tailoring the loss of the hat menswear throughout the ages it is very much so tailored but the fact that you have this lace trim train and these panels sort of brings in an etherealness that you don't often see with tailored looks. So, Stan. Next up is Jodie Whittaker, and she is wearing Simone. I believe that's how you pronounce it. If you watch Next in Fashion, that was on Netflix. In the first season, there was a designer named Carly Pearson, and now Simone is her brand. I think this is a great look. I really, really do. From my understanding, this look is actually made up of secondhand textiles that were either recycled or were like fabric scraps and sort of brought together. And I think it's beautiful. I think the orange sequins up top are stunning. I think they create a really beautiful sort of like fall away moment. Also, the fact that it's like a turtleneck is great. The big poofy sleeves are lovely. And listen, I don't know if Jodi is just saying, listen, do me a full A-line sort of big fluffy dress that's her choice I love it if it's not her choice like I still love it it's beautiful I really truly do think that it looks wonderful I think the shoe choice is also great I think it's fun I think it's different it's something that we very rarely see so everybody look at Jody take notes and then come back next year because like Jody's winning next up is Joy Crooks now she is wearing Kate Walker now this is a beautiful look, stunning, gorgeous, amazing, iconic, I'm obsessed. Now this look is inspired by dupatas and saris, which are elements of Southeast Asian dress. I would say that the dupata and the sari, while they're both definitely different, I believe that the dupata is more of like a shawl sort of element, whereas the sari is sort of like this beautiful long pieces of fabric that you wrap around the body. I think that's probably what inspired this hood cape moment. And it's, it's really, really lovely. The fact that it's embroidered 
so stunningly. It's also wonderful. And the fact that like this is a custom look, this is like time and energy was spent. It was really thought about too, which I think makes it so much more lovely. And then on top of it, you have this beautiful turtleneck piece of fabric moment that's all in leaves of embroidery that like fall down almost like a necklace. Then there's bra moment. Again, it's embroidered. It's trimmed in this gorgeous sort of gold texture. There's a tiny little sort of like necklace moment that comes down. It's like body jewelry. There's like all of this hand jewelry going on. It, it's gorgeous. And then the skirt. The skirt is like done in these beautiful sort of like costume jewels like gourd. Just like it's a gorgeous look and everywhere you look you said it's really actually beautiful I have to say stun gorge wonderful lovely and I feel like we've seen looks that sort of tap into different elements of Dress and cultural dress from around the world Just looking at red carpets here on hot la mode And it's not always easy to sort of bring those into a European or American Western sort of red carpet and be like look at how beautiful this is Honestly, I feel like this is a beautiful way of learning about South Eastern cultural dress. It's nice to see that those things can be adapted by designers too and sort of brought into a modern way that pays homage and actually has like not just a cultural appropriation or like fantasy sort of like oh look at how orientalism is happening here like no it's beautifully done it really works i know that joy crooks was very much so a part of this she really wanted it to be well done and beautiful and done in a way that actually pays homage and respect to those elements of cultural dress so i'm a stan it's beautiful like i'm not gonna get over that turtleneck embroidery necklace moment for a very long time next up is ksi and now he's wearing a bunch of brands now I know that this suit is Heliot Emil. Listen, it fits. YouTubers, and I know KSI now is a musician as well, but YouTubers very rarely like know what the f they're doing, but like this, credit where credit is due, it's there. So there is a suit, it fits well, I have to say. And then on top of that, have this sort of harness moment going through, it sort of cuts under the lapel. And I think that's really intriguing. It creates a waist of sorts and it doesn't like feel awkward when it creates the waist. Now, he's also wearing a purple glove. Now, at first I was like, what is that? And then I was like, oh my God, they're Prada. So these are from, I believe, the fall 2021 menswear collection from Prada. And they have a little Prada triangle sort of like pocket on them. Very gorgeous, very cute, very chic. And then he's also wearing Bottega Veneta boots. Now the boots are black, but then they have a sort of purple sole. And again, it sort of ties back into the black harness element and the purple of the gloves. And like, listen, a lot of times celebrities will get on the red carpet and they're just wearing something that is a designer sort of made match the shoes and it's not really like style it's not bringing different elements in different places and different things together and I feel like this is a good sort of way of doing styling it's intriguing it's different it's fun he looks very happy to have done it and honestly like I'm happy I'm proud I'm like oh my god youtubers getting it done wow Iconic. So thank you, KSI. Never thought I would say this on this channel. Next up is Little Sims. Now she is wearing Prada. This is a look that when I look at it, I'm kind of like, huh? This leather coat, this like beat up old leather coat, I feel like is probably a reference to recent Prada looks. I believe that the jacket actually is from spring 2022. It's this old sort of beat up leather coat. It's really, really gorgeous in that regard. Have to say, give her a shout out. And then also there's a pant moment, those sort of rubber tire track boots that are very popular, a green shirt. Listen, it works. Definitely different than what we would have seen had she wore full Prada look from the runway. I don't know if that would have like fit in necessarily with her vibe. So I like the fact that she's adapting elements that she appreciates. So she'll take the leather coat, it's gorgeous, and then sort of bring it into a more Little Sims sort of way. Overall, listen, do I obviously like want more exciting, more fun, more iconic? Yeah, sure. But at the same time, like, it seems very much so like Little Sims is going for more of like a menswear, demure sort of feeling. And so at the same time, it's not just like a suit, it's taking, you know, beautiful leather coat that's beat up, making it work to a degree. Do I want more? Yeah, absolutely. But like, considering what we got, it seems like there's a vision there that she has for herself. We have another Little Sims look, this time again, Prada. I think this one encaptures, again, that sort of like masculine feeling, but at the same time, it has that like nice little feminine touch in there. It's a gray coat and it's in a beautiful sort of weedy looking style. It's gray, it's wool, it's gorge. And then it has little Prada triangles right there in little pocket. And then also there's a little tie, white sort of button down. Again, has the Prada sort of triangle on there too. It's nice. It's fun. It's, there's a belt. And listen, you know me and belts. It's not my thing. It's not really what I'm into. I don't think it really works oftentimes. But when it comes to this look, I definitely think it's sort 
sort of hearkening back to early 1990 collections. I would say it's probably in the 1993, 1992 range where Mutual Prada was looking at military uniforms to inspire looks. We do have pieces from way back when that are cinched with Prada sort of belts like we have here. And also I think the way that the belt is cinched and then there's a pair of pants underneath it so it's not like a dress it's really a coat that's cinched with a pant it sort of gives like a new fun sort of take on suiting and tailoring and all of that sort of stuff again like i know it's not like new new but at least it's different than what we're used to seeing overall is it you know miraculous over the top ridiculous no but again i do think that little sims seems to be far more into suiting in a tailoring moment and it's not being done boringly. It's not being done in the same way that we're used to seeing it, so I'm very happy. Next up is Maya Jama, and she is wearing Mano. Now, listen, as we talked about earlier, Mano, cut out. Can we say that this is probably a reference to Bob Mackie's iconic design for Cher when she was at the Oscars? Like, yeah. Of course. The sort of zigzag cutout moment as a bra and then the cutouts at the skirt too. It just has very Cher vibes to it. I'm happy with it. I think it works. I think it's nice. And again, for Minot, it's like, yeah, reference an iconic dress reference a brand that isn't really around anymore. Like, I'm happy. I'm fine with that. I don't think that's really a problem. And again, it fits in with the brand's sort of ethos and vibe. Next up is Olivia Rodrigo, and she is wearing Alexandre Vautier. Now, I believe that this is from the spring 2022 Haute Couture collection. It's a silver sequin dress that sort of falls into what I believe are like silver sort of embellishments and like a chevron. So I don't think it's horrible. I think this is kind of like what Olivia goes for is sort of like a slip dress sort of feeling to it. I think she also does opt more and more for like sequins and sort of texture. I see what we're going for here, but again, I wish it was more exciting. I wish it was more daring. I wish it was just a bit more like fun. Also with that look on the runway, there were these beautiful boots that were attached. And I feel like that definitely sort of keeps in touch with that Alexandre Vautier sort of like very 1980s inspired situation. And I wonder maybe had we done that, like a shoe moment to help give it a little bit of a oomph, that would have been cool. And also I think from that collection, there are a lot of other great looks that would have fit in with what Olivia, in my opinion, is sort of doing. She's very into sort of cutouts. She's very into sort of sheer. She's very into sort of showcasing different elements of the body. I'm not sure that this exactly was the look from that collection to pick. I think there are a great number of looks to have picked that would have reflected maybe Olivia a little bit more. And also, I think that this look is good but I think it should have been dressed in a more exciting way. The boot probably would have helped a whole lot because like the little strappy sandal, meh. Then we have Tom Daly. He is wearing Louis Vuitton. This is a, I actually don't know. I don't, I have no idea where this is from. I know that it's a Louis Vuitton because the bag is a Petite Mal by Nicolas Jasquier. And then the boot or a, a Chelsea boot with a Louis Vuitton monogram. And then I just kind of presume that the shirt and the little jacket are Jasquier as well. I mean, the jacket sort of has like that old timey Balenciaga feel from when he was doing Balenciaga. So I think that this look is based on the fall 2021 collection. Maybe it was part of the commercial aspect of the collection. We can see that there are sort of like jackets and prints that sort of reflect the shirt moment going on. I get it. It definitely has like a Nicolas Jasquier sort of appeal to it. I'm intrigued by his collections being the men's wear look here, but also I feel like Virgil Abloh and like Tom Daly maybe is not the combo one should expect. I like the little blazer jacket moment situation. And I like the bag, everything else. I could, I could do without that. So I believe that that is the end of this Brit Awards red carpet. And you know what? Maybe that's for the best. It was rough. It was rougher than I initially thought. And like, I'm the one that saved all the images from this. I should have suspected that. But I guess I was going in a little bit more excited about it. Love to know what you all thought in the comments down below. Maybe you guys will be meaner than me. And I would get that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. TTYL.